Hi everyone, welcome back to Frank uh, Little Bench. And now uh, uh, I will attempt to repair uh, this uh, Commodore 64C, which is my last addition to uh, my small Commodore collection. Uh, this has been donated by a co worker. And it's almost uh, in perfect shape, but uh, it has an eye, um, quite a strange fault. Okay, you see this, these characters appearing on the screen. I'm just stopping uh, F3 at the moment, and it should not produce any character at all. But you see uh, random characters appearing on the screen. Uh, it also has a, a strange problem on uh, joystick port, and I will show you uh, with a uh, loading a game. Okay, here it is, uh, the famous impossible mission, uh, and let's try to go down on the elevator. Okay, you see, it uh, just uh, went up uh, alone, I didn't touch the, the joystick. Here it is, I go down, and it comes back, it comes back up. I go down, and it almost immediately goes up again okay you see I didn't touch and so on so it seems there is uh, uh, some problem on the up uh, uh, connection uh, for the joystick which is on the same uh, lines uh, of the keyboard matrix I will show you on the schematic it is the part of the schematic uh, this is the keyboard connector and uh, this is the control port 2 where the Mission Impossible uh, joystick uh, is plugged and the connection goes right to some uh, wires of the keyboard connection and they go to U1 which is a CIA 6526 on the port A and there is not much else in uh, other than these uh, um, filters um, to avoid uh, interference uh, coming from the control ports so I think uh, U1 is the problem but um, I will try to see if there is some, some problem uh, with uh, the filters uh, themselves before. Okay, the filters are these little uh, components here, which uh, looks like uh, ceramic uh, capacitors, but uh, if you observe them closely, they have three pins. And uh, basically, uh, you should uh, check that you have uh, less than one ohm, measuring uh, from the side pins and uh, no um, continuity between any of the side pins and the uh, center pin, which is a capacitor to ground. So I did check uh, every filter, and uh, they are they looks like they are good. So I just uh, extract and uh, remove the old uh, U1 socketed and uh, put a good replacement in place of uh, the old one which is this one which I marked uh, as faulty probably uh, and then uh, let me assemble the, the thing back and uh, check what we get we are again and I can toughen F3 like before and uh, everything looks good now so every other key works as expected. So okay, looks good. I will try to load the game uh, and see if the joystick problem is solved, uh, but uh, I think so. So here we have uh, our game back. And let's use the joystick to go down. 
and as you can see now it stays put so it doesn't move up again alone without touching the joystick so this is uh, another easy problem solved uh, uh, quickly well just because uh, it was a mm, very common fault uh, even uh, in the 80s um, I will try to explain uh, uh, something uh, using the schematic again ok first of all uh, here is a, a little um, uh, bad chip collections that some of them are from the 80s and some of them are uh, recent uh, changes on uh, of course Commodore hardware uh, they are all uh, most technology chips as you can see the majority of the chips are CIA 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 uh, CIA then I have a small uh, collection of 65 69 which is the big the big second chip including a nice uh, uh, ceramic one from uh, uh, one of my first uh, Commodore 64 repairs I kept this one because uh, it uh, instantly blows the fuse if you put in uh, into a C64 uh, anyway I didn't keep most of the bad chips uh, um, I did keep uh, most of the CIA that I changed because every single uh, CIA in this small collection uh, can uh, allow the C64 to start uh, well not maybe in both position U2 or U1 but in one of the two positions most of this uh, CIA allowed the, the Commodore 64 to start so uh, it can save me uh, if I find uh, some really broken uh, uh, CIA that uh, hold the bus down or uh, just uh, it's not functional enough to allow um, the start of uh, the Commodore 64 and let's go on the schematic okay here we have uh, again uh, u1 and u1 um, basically is connected to the keyboard connector you see there are two ports 8-bit ports pa and pb and both of them and uh, u1 uh, cia are connected to the keyboard connector and uh, to the game controllers so the joystick uh, let's scroll down so the both the control ports are connected to the U1 so basically when you have a non-working uh, or partly working U1 uh, you usually lose some uh, keys functionality um, but uh, usually the Commodore 64 starts um, if uh, some bits of the ports are uh, not functional you, you just miss the function of some some keys on, over the whole keyboard let's look now at what uh, the CIA in position U2 does and first of all uh, we notice that uh, two bits of the PA port go to the video address uh, lines it means that uh, these two bits selects the bank the RAM bank accessed uh, by the big chip so if one of these two bits uh, is not working you most of the time get garbage on the screen because the, the big chip doesn't access the right bank or it is it is not able to switch bank so sometimes you have to load the game uh, to understand uh, if this is a problem 
Uh, if you lose some other bits, you this, this other bits of the PA port are used for the serial bus. So if you don't communicate with the uh, uh, 1541 drive or the printer and so on, uh, this is probably the problem. Uh, anyway, you have to look at the CIA functionality. And the whole port B and the one pin of the port A goes to the user port. Uh, so, see, for example, you don't need anything connected to the user port. Uh, you can have in this position at U2 uh, a broken uh, CIA with the port B not working. And you still have a completely working uh, C64 excluding the, the user port. You get uh, serial bus communications, you get uh, back switch on VIC uh, and so on. So in uh, extreme cases, uh, uh, partly working uh, CIA can, uh, can be used in uh, position U2. So that's all. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and learned something uh, about the C64. Thank you for watching.